Peter, I've heard a lot about an inflammation response. Could you tell me, uh, how does the diet contribute to this? And actually, what is an inflammation response? Well, I'll start with your last question first. So inflammation is something that kind of gets a bad rap out there. Um, I think of inflammation like fire. If it's well controlled, it's actually a really good thing and it protects you. When it gets a little out of control, it can do bad things. It can kind of burn your house down versus keep your house warm. Inflammation is a response of the body to things in the body that ought not be there. So for example, when you have an infection, your body responds through an inflammatory cascade. I won't go into great detail here, but suffice it to say that your immune system creates a response to either wall that process off or eliminate it entirely. Similarly, when you're exercising, anybody who's been to the gym for the first time in a little while will feel really sore the next day. Why is that? In large part, it's because of inflammation. You've probably torn down pieces of muscle. You've probably done things to your body that your body's trying to sort of fix and repair. And as silly as it sounds, your body for a day doesn't actually want you to do much moving, and that's a large part of why you're sort of hurting at that moment. So your next question was, how does nutrition play a role into this? This is a hard question to answer in a couple of minutes, but I'm going to do my best. Inflammation is mediated by byproducts of fatty acids. So we eat these things called fats, and there's a whole bunch of different kinds of fats, but there's a subset of fats that play a really significant role in inflammation. People have probably heard of them. They're called polyunsaturated fatty acids. Poly just means they have more than two double bonds in them, or two or more to be specific, and unsaturated refers to double bonds or not. Everyone's probably heard of this as well, but within the polyunsaturated world, we tend to divide them into what we call omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids are the fatty acids you commonly find in plant oils. So the most common sources of these for us would be canola oil, safflower oil, corn oil, those sorts of things. Omega-3 fatty acids are typically the fatty acids you find in fish and fish oils. So think about how much you're eating from each of those categories. If you historically look at an Asian culture, and even a Medi Mediterranean culture, they would consume relatively equal amounts of fats from both the plant oils and the fish oils. In a Western culture, we tend to consume far more of the plant oils relative to the fish oils. So we have more of the omega-6 than the omega-3 relative to them where they're nearly equal. It turns out the higher that ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, as is the case in a Western diet, the more inflammatory your, your body tends to be. The reason is you generate more of a molecule called arachidonic acid than something called EPA and DHA. I don't want to get into the details of what those things are, but the way I describe arachidonic acid to people is it's sort of like gasoline. If you have a lot of gasoline and you pour a flame on it, you get a big fire. If you have a little bit of gasoline and you put a flame on it, you get a little fire. If you have a lot of arachidonic acid and you have some sort of inflammatory insult, like an infection, or you get into a car accident, or the stress of a long workout, your body tends to overreact with inflammation. That's a bad thing. If you have a little bit of arachidonic acid and you have the same sort of stresses, the response is a little bit um, more moderate. So are you saying, Peter, that it's really important in our Western diet, and generally speaking, of course, that we should be more conscious of taking in the omega-3, eating more fish, perhaps even supplementing with the omega-3 fish oils and so on. I really believe this is the case, and I, I certainly don't want to take us too far off track, but this is one of my major interests uh, in life, is understanding the role of fatty acid composition in terms of how we eat it and how it impacts all aspects of our health. But what you're saying is correct. As a general rule, I go out of my way to avoid eating any omega-6 fats, and it's hard to do that in, in North America, to be completely honest with you, because it's virtually in every food we consume. And I do go out of my way to consume as much omega-3 as I can.